Hi, I'm Sheila. Welcome to my channel, Seaside Snuggles Quilts, Patterns, and Crafts, where I focus mainly on quilts, but will occasionally post a different craft just for the joy of making. Today, I'm going to show you how I made the seven-pointed star block. Hope you can see that. <laughs> this is my fourth time trying to get this video done. So what I decided to do is use some of my old footage. So you'll see my hands moving, even though they're not synced with what I'm saying, because I'm just going to narrate this whole thing. I've had terrible sound problems. You don't want to hear that. Let's just get started. So the first thing that you need to do is to gather your pattern materials. You need to print your pattern pages and make sure that you are printing those at actual size or 100% scale. You want to rough cut the pieces out of the pattern so that you have a little bit of extra paper all the way around the pattern. Then you want to fold your pieces along each of the seam lines towards the front of the pattern. When you make your paper piece pattern, it's going to actually be in reverse on the back side of the paper. And you'll need to fold each section as you sew. If you're using regular paper, you'll be sewing through the paper right on top of the line. If you're using freezer paper, you're going to fold and sew right next to the fold for each seam line. In either case, you're going to start your pattern the same. I tend to rough cut pieces out, so this is what I'm doing here. I'm rough cutting pieces out for each of the sections. Then you can either pin or glue um, your fabric right side down to the underside of the fabric in section one. Or you can use freezer paper and just iron that piece down again right side facing down to the back side of the freezer paper and then trim around at least on the side that's going to be on your first seam which would be the seam between one and two. Now when you place piece two down you want that piece of fabric to be face up when your pattern piece is face up. You want to get them lined up with the paper folded. I hope that makes sense. When you place your first piece of fabric beneath your pattern, you want to make sure that that first piece is face down. Then you can trim it, well, either pin or glue it to the back of your copy paper, or if you're using freezer paper, just iron it so that it sticks to the back of section one. You want to trim it to a quarter inch seam allowance beyond the fold between sections one and two. Then you can size your number. When you place your number two piece, the pattern should be face up. Fold it over so that you can see the shape of section two, and then place your fabric right side up for piece two underneath the pattern. You want to line up a side one edge or trim it to size to match your quarter inch seam allowance. And then if you're using freezer paper, pin it while it's still folded. If you're using regular paper, open the pattern so that it's flat and then pin through the paper and both pieces of fabric. Then you'll be ready to take it to the sewing machine and make your first seam. So as you can see here, when I sew these together, I'm using regular paper for this demonstration, and I'm going to sew right through the paper. When I sew my seams, I want to start with the stitches off the edge of the paper, outside of the pattern, if it's on an edge piece, and then I want to stitch a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch, beyond the edge of that particular seam. And the reason that you want to do that is so that your stitches will be enclosed when you do the next seam. After I get all of my number two pieces sewn to each of the four sections of this pattern, then I'm going to take it to the iron 
and iron them flat. So let's do that. Now, if you're using freezer paper, you want to iron on the fabric side first and get your seam open. Be careful not to touch the back of the freezer paper with your iron. If you're using regular paper, you also want to iron first on the back side, but when you turn it over, you're going to need to secure it or just be aware that it's going to flap around a little bit. Make sure that it's straight before you make any cuts. With the freezer paper, after you turn it over to the paper side, give it another iron so that you can adhere that second piece to the back of the freezer paper before you trim it. So now to trim it. If your pieces were aligned at the seam allowance before you sew the pieces together, then you don't need to do any trimming between seams one and two. You can just prepare for seam three. Otherwise, you will need to do a little trimming. You can do that with your scissors or with a rotary cutter. Just be careful not to cut through your existing pieces of fabric. Now, to add piece three, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to fold our pattern between pieces two and three. After we have that fold, then we're going to cut a quarter inch seam allowance. With it still folded, you wanna take your third piece of fabric, place it underneath the pattern, orient it in the correct direction with the good side up. Make sure that you have at least a quarter of an inch all the way around that section. Pin it, trim it, and get ready to sew it. We're gonna do that to all four pieces, and then we'll take it to the machine and sew those pieces together. So here you see I'm sewing the third pieces on. It's going the same way as it did the second piece, and it will continue to work out the same way for any subsequent pieces that you have on this pattern. For this seven-pointed star, you have two sections that have five pieces and two sections that have four pieces. So you'll finish up with two of the sections early. Once you have all of your pieces sewn onto the paper, then you'll be ready to square it up. When you square it up, you wanna make sure that your ruler is on top of the black outlines. This will ensure that you keep your pattern sized correctly. Go ahead and cut around the pattern so that you leave all of the black lines on the pattern in all four sections. This is how it's gonna look when all four pieces are done and squared up. And now we're ready to put things together. But first, if you're enjoying this video so far and would like to see more, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, critiques, or encouragement, leave those down there too. My following's pretty tiny, so I get to respond to almost everyone's comments. So there's a plus. <laughs> if you'd be so kind as to leave a like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated and help my channel to grow. I hope you're excited about making a variation of this block. Well, let's get back to it so I can show you how to finish it. So now that you have all four of the quadrants sewn together or sewn, it's time to sew them together. You can either sew top to bottom or left to right. I'm going to sew right to left. So I'm going to put the two top pieces together and then the two bottom pieces together. I prefer to remove the paper first. Some people just like to fold it back. It's entirely up to you. But the way this pattern is written, parts of it will nest so that you get a nice star point at the top. The legs will nest at the bottom and that will help to keep you straight. So if you sew the top first like I'm doing and then the bottom, you want to iron that seam allowance to the left for the top piece and to the right on the bottom piece if the pieces are facing you right side up, okay? So with those pieces right side up, the top piece's seam allowance is gonna to go to the left and the bottom piece seam allowance is gonna to go to the right. If they're upside down, it's gonna be the opposite. The top piece face down 
the seam allowance is going to go to the right, and the bottom piece face down, the seam allowance is going to go to the left. This is so that you can nest those pieces and get a nice four patch in the center when you put all four of these together. I do recommend that you press before you sew this last seam to make sure that your seams are fully open. You also should pin at the sides of the star where they come together to form your legs. And I'll point those out to you. I'll circle them right here on the screen. Make sure that you have pins there to make sure that comes together and that your center is nice and tight and then you'll be ready to sew. So we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and finish this bad boy up. All right, so now we have our final square open or sewn up. Now we're gonna open it and iron it flat. If you like, you can make that cute little swirly in the back <laughs> to give you a nice flat center. But other than that, your seven pointed star is complete. Thank you so much for joining me. What did you think of the pattern? I hope you liked it. If you'd like to give it a try, I'll leave a link to the pattern down in the description below where you can find it in my Etsy store. If you make it and would love to share, I would love to see it. Tag me on Instagram at Seaside Snuggles QPC with no spaces. I'd love to have you here again. I hope you'll consider coming back to visit. Until then, have a beautiful day.